Okay, we're in chapter five. Trying to get myself in position here to do this. There we go. And we're talking about random experiments and probability models. A random experiment is any experiment where you can't predict the outcome exactly. So almost all experiments are random. Some things seem a lot more random than others. And a probability model is a way of predicting what fraction of the time the certain outcomes you might see from the experiment happen. That fraction of the time is just a long-term fraction of the time. We'll talk about that in a minute. So probability describes the behavior of random phenomenon when observed in the long run. What that means is you have to repeat the random experiment over and over again. What we are really interested in is the predicted shape of a histogram or bar graph of random values when many values are observed. But from now, for now, we'll just concentrate on a single type of outcome rather than all the outcomes at once. One example of this type of experiment and this type of outcome we might study is coin tossing. Here we have 100 simulated tosses and a corresponding bar graph. So here's the results of 100 tosses. H is heads, T is tails. If you're tossing it heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 sometimes you see a string of heads. Tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, and so on. It just goes on like that. And then down here, we have a bar graph that shows the number of heads and number of tails, which I will now try to zoom in on. Here we go. So there it is. We see that it's uh, maybe 58 heads and maybe 42 tails. You could say, well, I thought it'd be closer to 50-50, but you'd be sort of wrong. Uh, there's ways of predicting ab about how far away from 50-50 you might expect it. I gotta get this going, there we go. You might expect it to see, but that's beyond the scope of our class. It's just that even though something is supposed to happen uh, about half the time, it doesn't happen exactly half the time, but does get closer and closer to half and half as you make more and more observations. So 100 tosses isn't enough for the fraction of heads to be close to 50% because these, these fractions here are out of 100, right? So that's 58% heads. No, that's sort of close to 50, but not that close, but that's only 100 tosses. So it takes a lot more than 100 repetition of an, ex of an experiment um, to try to analyze approx even approximately what the actual probability, the long-term fraction of the time, you see certain kinds of things happen, which would be a probability description. Okay. So in order to see how that works, you could try uh, simulating more tosses. So here is what happens every time something like this happens. So with a thousand tosses, you see here, maybe it's 485 heads, and then it's uh, 515 to be left to make a total of a thousand. So they're not really close to 500 for sure. We were off on the other one by, I don't know what, by eight, right? Now we're off by somewhat more, but the fraction that we're off by is a lot less because it's 10 times as many tosses and maybe twice as many, uh, twice as large a difference in actual tosses from the exact half. But when you divide that by 10 times as big a denominator and making a fraction of the time you see heads, it's closer to a half than it was before. And here we see bars that are closer to look, looking to be about the same size, but of course, say about the same size, it's about the same fraction of a thousand. And then if you go up to 10,000, you can barely see the difference. The difference in actual numbers of heads is probably something like 50 or 60 or something, but now we're dealing with 100,000 tosses, so it just seems like they're exactly the same size. So. That's the kind of thing that happens when you repeat random experiments. The fraction of the time you see something happening stabilizes to some number as a, as a fraction. The number of times you see it and how much they differ from what you might expect is still a substantial size, but you're, when you divide by the number of tosses, that difference goes away. So for coin tossing, the fraction number of heads over number of tosses approaches a half, and I don't have to run these simulations many times for this to happen, every time it looks like that. It's crazy. 
So more tosses closer to equal size with a great deal of predictability. And that's why probability is useful. And if when you do lots of experiments, probability tells you what fraction of the time you're going to see a particular type of outcome. So with coin tossing, maybe you do five or maybe you have to do maybe more like 10,000 tosses to be really close to a half, but 100,000 basically guarantees the fraction of the time you see heads is close to a half. That fraction that appears when you do many experiments and compute the fraction number of times you see the outcome you're interested in divided by the number of experiments is called the long-term relative frequency. And we call that also the probability. So probability long-term relative frequency for us is the same thing. So it's just a shorter way of saying it. Probability of heads is long-term relative frequency of heads. If you've done a lot of experiments, what fraction of the time would you expect, do you see heads? Does it gets closer and closer to this number called the probability. Note that the actual number of times the outcomes occur may not be that close to what you would predict. Here it says what it was. In 100,000 tosses, the number of heads was 50120. So it's 120 over 50,000. But when you divide that by 100,000, you can barely see the difference in height between 50,000 and so 550,000 and 50,120 are almost the same number. If you make a bar of those two heights next to each other and you start the graphs at zero, you're not going to see much of a difference. So that's because when you divide that small, that small change by 100,000, both of those numbers, this one and this one divided by 100,000 are basically a half. So that's the story about repeating experiments and getting probability and looking at bar graphs and seeing how the bar graphs become a height that's consistent, even though the experiment is random. And that indicates that the long-term relative frequency becomes a number that's consistent. No matter how many times you repeat the experiment of doing it many times, the, if you look at the fraction of the time of a certain type of outcome, it always approaches the same number. And we call that number the probability. You'll notice that means the probability is between zero and one because it's a fraction of the time the number of times we see heads divided by the number of experiments. If it's all heads, you get one. If it's all tails, you get zero. Otherwise, you get something between zero and one. So we'll investigate that kind of idea further on um, upcoming videos. I'm going back to learning glass now and uh, whipping out my, my, uh, my markers. And we're going to uh, whip up some discussion of probability and events and different kinds of things like equally likely outcomes and different kinds of experiments we might carry out. And so I'm closing off this video now.